Well, tonight we continue sharing stories of the lives changed by Columbine 25 years ago tomorrow. And everybody we've spoken with emphasizes just what a tight-knit community it is. And a strong example of that, there are 14 current staff members at Columbine High School today who lived through that terrifying day 25 years ago. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon speaks to two of them about why it was important to them to stay. I cannot imagine a better job. High school football. Football is a hard sport. Our kids have to work hard. There's nothing quite like it. It parallels life because life can be awful hard. And the Columbine coaches. I know God has put me in this situation. This has become a vocation more than a job. Will always fight for their family. There's no doubt about it. This was a special community before, but what happened on April 20th only entrenched that. This is 7 News at 5. A tragic day at Columbine High School. Good evening, everyone. I'm Andrew Trujillo, live at Swedish Hospital. Sometimes it feels like it happened just recently, and other times it seems like a million years ago. It's an incredible place, a beautiful place, a special place where something really awful happened. Archives at the Denver Public Library. There are the headlines we all remember. Everybody knows where they were when 9-11 happened, and I think most people know where they were when Columbine happened. But there's another story from that same year. Head coach Andy Lowry, who spent 30 seasons with the school, will always cherish. They worked hard and stuck together and ended up winning a state championship for our first year in 1999. So, A remarkable comeback for the Rebels, teenagers who found themselves again on that field. Kind of wish we would have been able to celebrate more, but we had such heavy hearts that it felt some guilt. One of the kids that we lost was Matt Kector, and he was in our football program. Matt was a special person with, with high morals and high values and just how he treated people. MJK, Matt's initials, became the team's rallying cry that year. How did Columbine survive? It survived because of the kids. And in their memories of the people they lost was a way to live. I don't think the objective has ever been to like, let's go out and let the world know how great we really are. It's been, let's take care of each other, let's love each other, and through that, hopefully the legacy changes. Because Columbine pride isn't what it sounds like. It's not a look at me or notice me type of thing. Instead, what it is is it's a look at others around me. It's a pride in one another. It's a dedication to friendship. And sometimes in sports, there's a win you can't quite explain. It's quite the coincidence. I. I don't know because I don't know if anybody expected it in 99 and I'm telling you right now it just kind of happens. Since that first 99 win, the Rebels have taken home six championship titles total, all under Coach Lowry. Their most recent late last year, almost 25 years since the shooting. There are no tears of sorrow, that's for sure. Would it be insensitive for me to say that love won? No, not at all. I think faith and love both won, absolutely. A fitting legacy for the field they call home. With photojournalist Colin Riley, Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. We have a very special broadcast coming up tonight looking at the resilience of the Columbine community. It's called The Beauty That Came From Columbine. We sure hope you join us 6.30 tonight right here on Denver 7. We'll be right back. <laughs>